All right, quick video on how to um, take your, your blades off of your electric lawnmower. I'm not sure if this is good for everything, but this is a Ryobi 40 volt uh, HP electric lawnmower with two 40 volt electric batteries. So if you got the same one. So what we got here is a, uh, a set of blades, two blades. And you can see I'm taking it off to grind it down because they're just beat to hell. We have a rocky yard, so we get some rocks flying around. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the uh, the nut off the threaded bolt that's already here, that's permanently mounted to the unit, and then I'm going to take off the plate and the uh, Teflon in between. I'm not sure what that's made of, hard plastic Teflon, in between the blades and the uh, lockdown plate. Okay, one of the things I didn't talk about when I was taking this apart because I had already loosened it was having this wood block in here. I'd put this here just to anchor it, and then when I spun the blades around, they hit on it so I can loosen the nut because the blades, they spin freely. There's nothing to lock it down. I think Ryobi would be smart to, on the motor, maybe mount just a little uh, circular uh, clamp thing here that you could come, it could come with a pin. You put the pin in there, and it holds the, the blades from spinning. Not sure how that would work, but just a suggestion to Ryobi. I think that's how you say the name. So I've already loosened the nut because I had to kind of step on it. So basically you just take it off like you would normally counterclockwise to loosen it. What I'm using is a uh, 9 16 inch wrench. And uh, this says to use a 15 millimeter, but I didn't want to go out to my shed to get the millimeters. So <laughs> that works fine. And then I had to pry this open a little bit to get it off but I've already got it loose, like I said, so I'm just gonna take that off. And then I'm gonna take this piece off, which has little grooves. It's pretty easy to remember which side goes in. This is the dirty side, so that's gonna go on. There is a uh, counter uh, cut thing here, so it's oblong with two flat sides that this plate will grab into when it starts to get tightened down. You can see it can only go on one way, and then it holds. Um, so you kind of want to line that up too. And then I got my blades loose. So I got two blades. I'm noticing that the concave goes downwards or upwards, but downwards or inwards on the actual unit when I take it off. And the inside blade has a curve, the outside doesn't. So it's pretty easy to remember how to put it back together. Now let's sharpen these babies. Okay, what I've done here is uh, I mounted just a small vice grip, uh, table vise, onto my railing. And we're going to be removing these railings to put wires in later, so I don't care about damaging the underneath. But for now, I didn't want to damage the top. So I just used a little sliver of wood, which is a, a package of wedges that I had bought in, or shims for other work. And they come in handy for a lot of stuff. So I just put that in between the thing tighten it down here and I'm good to go with locking in a blade so I'll start with the uh, doesn't matter which blade so I'm gonna stick this on here tighten it down and I'm gonna do the upside first get that nice and tight and I'm gonna grind this down so it's nice and sharp again right there all right, I got my safety glasses on, which is just sunglasses today. I've got my uh, long sleeve shirt on and my gloves. I went and changed because when the sparks start flying, you don't want to get your arms burnt or your hands burnt. So I'm just going to grind this down by cutting at a really sharp angle, not like this, but really sharp to try to get the, the, the edge much cleaner and tighter. So here we go. That's a lot better. 
It's still a little dull. I'm going to hit it one more time on the back here. The front of this in particular blade, the other blade I've already done wasn't as concave. This one has more of a concave because this is the, the rear blade. So I'm thinking that this is, they, they probably just sharpen this edge only, but I'm going to hit it from the back just a tiny bit more to give it a little bit more of a, a blade rather than a, a nub because it's been ground down from the rocks and stuff. Now that's not, not that is not sharp enough to cut your finger, but you can feel it. It's definitely a lot better. So let's go ahead and flip this over real quick. I don't have to tighten this down too much because I'm not putting a lot of pressure on it. I'm not putting a lot of downward pressure. Actually, this guy here is different than the other blade. Oh, I see. I got the other side now. My bad. All right. I got this flipped over. This is the other blade. You can see how, I don't know if you can see this, but it's it just goes up and down right here because I've hit so many rocks. Up there in the tall grass, there's a lot of rocks and I can't pick them all up, so I just do my best, but uh, here we go. Once again, I'm going to let that grinder come to a halt before I set it down so I don't scar my floor. Okay, it's still a little bit bumpy out here, but it's definitely a lot sharper, and that's what I want. I, I'm hopefully going to be cutting a lot of grass and not hitting too many rocks, so <laughs> it doesn't need to be uh, razor sharp. You can probably see the edge there a little bit, and it, it probably still looks pretty bumpy to you if you're, if you're getting a good shot through the camera. And uh, let's put it back together. And I don't know if you could see, you could see the how shiny and better it is. So hopefully this cuts a lot better. So this was the back side. You can see where the pattern was on there. And this has a hole and a, a moon, half moon thing. So that's the way it goes. You got to find the half moon there and line them up. So there you go. So now because I'm putting this back on, it's going to be the opposite way. I'm going to probably have to lay this on its side. Maybe not. Let me get everything put snugged up first here. And then I'm going to try to wedge this piece of wood in over here to hold the blades in place. While I tighten the nut. So there's that. And then, oh, I got it upside down. So I got to have concaved sides facing inwards. There, that's better. That fit on there a lot better. Now this side goes in, and these twin blades lock in the same position here, like that. So, but they're supposed to be that way because of the half moon. Even though it's not going to get in there, it might pull in once I get it going into the uh, once I tighten it. So I'm going to take this piece. that you just kind of got to line up it does have the little circle so it should grab on and this guy here you want to line it up so the uh the flat parts here match the flat parts on the bolt which they do line up just right there take my nut throw that on there and now as i tighten it it should suck it in just enough that it grabs onto everything here I was surprised that these blades weren't across, that they were together, but I guess that's what they want. They want a real tight, and then on the outside, it, it separates itself. I don't know if you can see this, but uh, these are separated. I can actually put my finger in there, and then they come together, and it's one piece here. But that's the way it came. I had knocked it loose so much that it was cattywampus, and I think you can maybe do that, but uh, I'm just going to leave it the way it came in the factory. I, I'm cutting some long grass out there. Okay, so now I got that piece 
in place. And I'm gonna tighten that down. But I'm actually gonna step on it slightly because it, it, I had to step on it to loosen it. So I'm gonna step on it slightly to tighten it too. Just get a little leg pressure. Make sure that it's on there really tight. Now we step on it to get it back off next time, right? There we go. So that baby is back on there, ready to go cut some grass. If you like our videos, please hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button, and we'll see you next time.